Hey guys, it's Dr. Adam Nally coming to you on a Friday evening. It's about 8.15 <clears throat> and um, hopefully you're having a wonderful good Friday. Uh, hopefully you have a chance to fast. If you were, had joined the fast with us and you've probably broken it at this point and you're feeling pretty good um, or if you cheated heavily and you ate too many carbs, then you have, probably have a carb hangover. Um, so uh, welcome this evening and hope you guys are doing well. Um, I, I've been talking a lot about with a lot of people and there's been a lot of uh, controversy online about um, prevention and treatment of uh, viral infections, specifically the coronavirus, and what to do and how to do it and how to approach it. And so this evening, uh, yesterday evening, I did a short four-minute video about um, quinine and the risks associated with quinine. And this evening, I'm going to talk about zinc. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about megadosing zinc, and I realize that there are some um, there are some um, in, in, uh, I, ICU physicians that are using large amounts of zinc in treatment in critical care cases, but that's a whole different story. And so I thought I would talk about zinc and what it means, uh, the good, bad, and the ugly of zinc, and <coughs> excuse me, and, and why it's important and why it can be a problem if you're in, inappropriately using it. So I, I, hope, I, I hope, hope this is somewhat interesting to you. Uh, I know I realize it's a, it's a Friday evening and you're probably watching Netflix or doing something better or have something better to do, but maybe we'll talk a little bit about zinc. Anyway, uh, it's good to see you guys. Um, so number one, uh, what I wanted to talk about is, let me pull it up here. Uh, first, uh, zinc is actually essential. The zinc is a, is a metal. Um, zinc is one of the essential metals that our body uses in a number of components in the brain and a number of pathways. Um, inadequate zinc or zinc deficiency can cause uh, decreased cognition. It can um, decrease memory. You can actually see depression and anxiety and even um, uh uh, suicidal th behavior. Uh, if you don't have enough zinc, if you have a zinc deficiency, then there's a, you, you can see skin changes, poor hair growth. There's a whole slew of things that can happen if you don't have enough zinc. So zinc is important. And zinc is found as a trace mineral in our bodies. And, and uh, if, although what we've noticed is that there's a decline in uh, zinc in our food sources. And so it may become necessary to supplement zinc. I've actually had at least five or six patients in my practice in the last year that when we tested them, their zinc levels were low and they were eating normal meals, uh, but just did not have adequate zinc. So zinc, zinc can be important. Now, in this era of coronavirus and COVID-19, um, one of the interesting things we find is that zinc also plays a role in the, um, in the, in the conversion. So as you breathe in, you pull in oxygen, you exhale, you exhale out uh, carbon dioxide. Your body um, pulls the oxygen into the bloodstream and your body has to take the carbon dioxide and a little enzyme called carbonic anhydrase converts that carbon dioxide in your bloodstream into carbonic acid. Then it passes through the cell wall and then on the outside of the lung, that carbonic acid converts it back into uh, carbon dioxide so you can actually exhale it. Zinc is essential as is um, melatonin in the conversion process of carbon dioxide across the membrane. And one of the suspicions uh, in regards to uh, why some of these patients get so severe is that it's not that, it's not that they're having ARDS, uh, it's that what's occurring is that these patients, um, are, it's as if they were placed on, up on uh, um, a really high peak or they have, they have high altitude sickness. And the, the pattern that shows up is light as if they have high altitude sickness. Now, the, what high altitude sickness is, is it's a poor ability to convert uh, carbon dioxide back into a gas and exhale it. And so it's, it changes the respiratory drive. It causes, because of the carbonic anhydrase that builds up, it creates um, a, a shift in the pH, creating edema and can cause a, a total white out of the lungs. And so there's a number of docs, a couple of them in New York that suspect that this is not so much a pneumonia as it is a, um, the virus actually affects the, a person as if they have high altitude sickness. And they're actually finding that zinc and um, uh, ma uh, melatonin uh, are effective in, in enhancing. And then, then the other two, the number of other drugs, a couple of antivirals, the hydro hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin are effective in suppressing that, that problem and allowing that uh, transfer of gas, whether it's carbon dioxide back out or oxygen back in, um, we're not fully sure yet, and they're, re they're researching that right now. But what they found is that using or replacing adequate zinc and replacing adequate melatonin enhances that conversion process, and the enzyme that, that participates in that process is called carbonic anhydrase. So a lot of docs have started saying, well, oh, let's just give everybody loads of zinc. <clears throat> now, and, and in, the, in, in the intensive care unit, they're using very high doses uh, to displace the, the abnormal viral effect to do so. But there's, 
I've and I've heard people on online talk about giving huge doses of zinc every day. That's a problem. And the reason is this, and I'm going to post this up here. Um, if I give you, if you, I give you a, do, a dose of zinc greater than 50 milligrams, it actually creates toxicity. And the challenge is that toxicity leads to abdominal pain, um, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, confusion. Uh, and the challenge is that zinc actually displaces the absorption of copper and displaces the, the displaces the absorption of magnesium. So t taking more than 50 milligrams of zinc is a is a problem and can create toxicity. Uh, and some patients see that at 100, 100 milligrams of zinc. Some people see that it's 50. The challenge is if you're if you're taking more than 50 milligrams of zinc every day, you're actually changing the way your body can absorb other uh, minerals like magnesium and like copper, which are essential in a number of other factors. So really, really important is zinc is essential, but too much of the zinc is a problem. And I've heard a number of physicians and a number of so-called experts talking about doing 100, 200 milligrams of zinc um, for the lay person who really isn't sick as a preventative measure. And that's actually dangerous. And I don't recommend it. Um, if you're my patient, I would say it's a no-no. Um, I recommend somewhere between 10 and 30 milligrams of zinc on a daily basis, which is a, a very adequate dosage uh, of zinc to, so to replace the, that, that uh, metal, which is important. So don't take more than that. If you um, if you are taking a large amount of zinc, uh, we actually know that more than 140 milligrams per day diminishes the absorption of copper and, and it actually competes for, for the site that absorbs it. And you can't absorb magnesium and can't absorb copper. Magnesium, as many of you have had nighttime cramps, that's caused by lack of magnesium. Magnesium plays a role in multiple components in the body, uh, including muscle and brain and a uh, whole slew of things. And then copper plays a big role as well um, in cognition, in memory and things of that nature. So um, I have patients that have displaced their taking excessive amounts of magnesium and, and zinc and actually suppress their ability to have, use copper and create something like a, like a, a Parkinson's-like effect because of that. Um, so be very cautious. If you don't know how much to take, don't take extra amounts. And if some, some um, internet guru tells you to mega dose zinc, um, talk with your doctor about it first before you start doing that. Because uh, the advice I've heard literally from five different people in the last week is take 100 to 200 milligrams of zinc every day. Don't do that. That's bad. It's dangerous. And, and, it, and it can be uh, very detrimental into your health. So something to consider there. I thought I'd give you, that's my seven minute uh, blip on zinc. Yeah. So what do I recommend? To my patients, as a healthy way to help prevent viral infection, I recommend somewhere between 10 and 30 milligrams of zinc a day. I recommend 5 to 10 milligrams of melatonin because they both actually help with the, the oxygen and carbon dioxide transport across the lung membrane. Um, I recommend good sleep. I recommend wearing your mask uh, to, to prevent droplet particles like, like this. Uh, from from passing back and forth. Uh, I recommend some sunlight, at least 30 minutes a day. We know that sunlight itself, sun exposure, uh, not enough to burn you, but enough to be out in the sun, uh, notably diminishes viral replication uh, because it actually enhances melatonin and vitamin D in the body. Um, and so there's another number of other pathways that I won't go into. And then lastly, get adequate sleep. Five very simple things. I've been talking about them for the last three weeks. Um, those are the those are the key things. If you're doing those, you're going to be healthy. If you're limiting the carbohydrates, you're not eating a bunch of garbage, you're going to be healthy. You're going to do fantastic. So, so very important. So I thought this evening I would uh, give you that little blip uh, and then answer some questions for you. I know I've probably... Um, well, let's see here. Let me just dive in here. Uh, good evening, uh, fasting friends. Hope everyone's well. All right, let's see. There's Patty and Peggy and Tammy and uh, Crystal. How was my fast? Anina, Anina, my fast was great. It was so I always they're always nice. They're always wonderful. Um, hello, Dr. Ellie from California. Fast went well. Broke with a fillet. Oh, how nice, Vicky, a fillet. My wife actually didn't want to cook tonight, and so there is a Rudy's that's that does. Um, the takeout curbside, uh, and uh, she went and got me some prime rib, and I broke my fast with prime rib, and it was heavenly. I have never had Rudy's prime rib before, and I usually do their brisket. Um, and this, she said, "You know they have prime rib," and I went, "Oh, oh!" So I broke it with prime rib. So it was actually very, very nice. It was actually a wonderful way to end uh, a day of fasting and prayer and focus on on um, uh, spirituality. So I hope hopefully you're all having the same experience. Uh, or something similar there too. Hello, Eric. Good to see you. Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> Cindy, Cinda did the fast. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, I am so excited for you guys. Let's see here. Haven't eaten yet either. Oh, Sheena's still fasting. Good for you. 
Good evening. We made it. Rough week here. Glad we're at the weekend. I am Toulouse. Um, it has been a rough weekend, hasn't it? It, it, it? Is it going to be as good as last Friday's conversation? Vicky, I don't know. That really depends. Uh, last week we spiraled downhill and uh, it, was, it was quite an interesting and enlightening conversation. Uh, it was fun though. Let's see. Hello from Kansas, Patty. Does, does it matter that it's Friday? Uh, can't tell the days apart. A lot of people tell me they can't tell the days apart either, Jennifer. I'm hearing that from a lot of people. Hello from China Grove. Dennis is back. Peggy is there. I've been wondering about zinc. I do 50 milligrams a day. So Peggy, 50 is probably adequate. Um, if you're noticing diarrhea or looser bowels or nausea, you may want to back that off. Uh, we find that anything more than 50 can cause toxicity and can diminish magnesium uptake. And so if you're getting nighttime leg cramps, we may want to back the zinc back a little bit and add a little more magnesium. That's, that's one of the things that I commonly see. Hello, Wynette from, Pen from Pen Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see. Hi, Ho from Kansas. Hello, Mark. And there's Margie from uh, Louisville. And Sherry Hart from Utah. Hey, Sherry, how are you? Garrett. Uh, oh, Katie's saying hello to Garrett, I think. And then good morning from Cambodia. Karen is back. Hello, Karen. That's always good to see you. Um, we're, it's our evening, your morning, I think. Are you ahead of us or behind? You're ahead of us, aren't you? I think you're ahead of us. It's a little after 10 a.m. Uh, on Saturday. So you are ahead of us. Great. Finished your fast about an hour ago. Congratulations. We love it. Uh, almost sounds like symptoms of radiation. You know, Sheena, it, uh, radiation sim, sim, radiation uh, 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 toxicity can also cause similar symptoms like that. It's a possibility uh, because it affects the neurological system and nerves. Um, magnesium, zinc, and copper all play a role with nervous function. And if you are deficient or toxic, it can affect it that way. <clears throat> Let's see. It's been a long time. Hello, Shub. Sherry, how are you? Good to see you. I've heard too much zinc can displace magnesium. Um, so you want to back the magnesium back so you're not because it will actually compete for magnesium absorption and copper absorption. So you want to you want to look, look you don't want to take in more than 50 milligrams of zinc a day. And if you're taking in 40 or 40 or 50 and you're getting leg cramps at nighttime still, I find that that may be not enough magnesium, but too much magnesium can cause diarrhea as well. So so you want to be be wary of that. I think I'm more afraid of these supplements than I am the virus. We don't, Sheena, our body needs it and our body will try to absorb what is necessary. And so what I tell patients is if you're taking an adequate um, recommended daily allowance of those, you should be fine. Um, we, we will sometimes use higher dosages to treat various disease processes. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's the that's the case. Sunlight, uh, ha, ha, let's see, Chad says sunlight, What that, what is that? Oh yeah, well now we've been quarantined from other people, but not from sunlight. So remember, this quarantine doesn't mean you can't leave your house. Um, I would encourage you to leave the walls of your house and go outside in the sunlight if you can find some. Uh, don't get burned, but wear, wear, a, wear a hat. Uh, but, but some of that sunlight, that sunlight is actually essential for us. So, so very important. So how much magnesium? Sue, I usually tell people to start with about 250 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. Uh, in, uh, the other magnesiums can cause more diarrhea. 250 milligrams is a good starting point. Uh, I have some patients that take up to 2,000 magnesium uh, milligrams, depending on what we're treating or what we're doing with it. But I was starting with 250 is usually adequate. And they usually don't put magnesium in multivitamins uh, because they cause diarrhea. So there may be a small amount, somewhere between 250 to 500 milligrams. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, all right. What are natural sources of zinc? Um, there are a number of, uh, you know, you, that's a good question, Tammy. I will have to look back. I think oysters has them, zinc, uh, some seafood. Uh, I think egg yolk has it and, um, it is slipping my mind on the other good sources of zinc. If someone remembers and there's, you're a nutritionist on here and you know, pop it in the chat bar. I forget. Or someone, uh, I, it's slipping my mind, zinc sources. I thought it was egg and uh, shellfish had, had a good sources of zinc. If I remember, it's just off the top of my head. Uh, do we need to take zinc and melatonin at the same time? Uh, I usually take zinc in the morning with my, it's, I, there's actually zinc in my multivitamin. There's uh, 15 milligrams of zinc in my multivitamin. Um, and so I do that in, with, at morning. It, it splits it up. I, I take half of it in the morning and half at noon. And so I get half of it. Uh, in with my two meals, and then I take my melatonin at night because it actually does help me sleep. Uh, Los Angeles stay at home order extended until May 15th. I heard that, Vicki. All right, finished the fast about an hour ago. I did two, Phyllis. It's great. 
Uh, hello from South Detroit. I am scared about the vaccine. You know, Lillian, um, uh, all of us are a little leery about, you know, anytime a vaccine comes out, I, I don't jump up and down and say, oh, yes, everyone has to get it. I, I like to watch it. I like to read about it. I like to look at the studies behind it and then determine you know, what, 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 is it, what are the pros and cons of using a vaccine. Um, you know, we live in the United States, and so I find it highly unlikely um, unless we suddenly change our government that they're going to mandate us to take this vaccine. Uh, but the, there may be benefits, there may be risks, and so we want to be aware of that. And like I said, I, I, I'm not, I, I won't cross that bridge till we come to it, and so we'll, then we'll, we'll look at it at that point in time. But as I understand, it, it probably won't be, at least, it'll be at least 18 months before a true effective vaccine is available, if there even is one. I realize there's a bunch of people claiming they're in the process of making one, but to truly have um, studies that are effective and looking at an appropriate, it takes at least 18 months to bring out, to bring out a vaccine. Um, Ray Rives talking. I don't know what that means, Holly. Not quite sure. All right. Oh, dear. I'm in Maryland, so mine will probably last until June. <laughs> All right. How many hours of a fast? Uh, 24 hours was what we did, uh, Cheryl. I hate vaccines. I don't want one. No vaccines. Lillian, I'm not going to force you to have one. Uh, hello, Deb. Finished your fast with baked salmon. Oh, yum. That sounds awesome. Hello. In Th Joan is in Thailand. Wow. You're stuck in Thailand for a while. You're stuck because you can't get back or you're serving there or you're working there. Um, all right. Let's see. Harrington, Washington. Hello, Ed. And Kathy's here. Hello. So Sheena says, I never realized how bored I am without food. It really passes the time. Yes, many of us actually use food um, to, to uh, take away boredom. And so it's important to understand that. And, uh, and going through an intentional fast helps, helps a person recognize what they're doing and what they're using food for. So very, very, very important. Very, very true. Hello in Shreveport Crystals. Good to see you. All right. Aaron says hello. And hello, Sherry Taylor. Let's see. Uh, all right. Hello from Tasmania, Australia. Hey, Carrie. Cool. You're in Tasmania. That's awesome. I've always wanted to visit Tasmania. Let's see. What is a good dosage for magnesium? Oh, I think I, I answered that a little earlier. About start, I start with about 250 milligrams per day. How much melatonin? I start with 5 to 10 milligrams. Uh, or actually, 5 to 10. More than 10, um, I don't usually recommend that. Uh, because it really isn't effective, but somewhere between five and 10. Hello in Naples, Florida. That's awesome. Hello. And Brisbane, Australia. We have some, some Aussies here. We have some uh, two Aussies here, different areas. And we've got Mark from Wyoming. All right. Let's see here. What about taking N acetylcysteine? Uh, I am a fan of N acetylcysteine, Dwayne. Um, it, it actually has some other benefits that are unrelated to the zinc. Uh, however, um, Zinc plays a role in the formation and use of NAD, and n acetylcysteine plays a role there too. Hello, Dr. Nelly. It's Cindy Guttery from Kansas. I did the fast. When fasting, can you take your vitamins plus the, the BHB drink? Um, I, I don't usually recommend taking vitamins if you're fasting because the, 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 um, uh, the, the B vitamins will make you upset, make your stomach upset. And uh, I don't recommend, the, if you're truly fasting, I don't recommend the beta hydroxybutyrate. Uh, because that actually will break the fast. All right. Are pistachios good for melatonin? Uh, you know, Dorinda, I will have to look at pistachios. I don't remember. But the problem with pistachios is they're, they're higher in carbs, so I don't do a lot of pistachios because they kick me out of ketosis. Um, I sleep good. I still need the melatonin. Uh, do, do you need it? Um, well, we're not taking... The, the recommendation for melatonin is not so much for sleep. It's because the melatonin... Um, plays a role in stabilizing the conversion of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the membrane in the lung and has been beneficial, has been shown to be beneficial in helping to, if you do get the coronavirus, helping to, to keep you from having severity of the disease. That's really where the, the zinc and the melatonin come into play. Um, and so a lot of people have talk, been talking about megadoses, which I do not agree with. I think that's inappropriate. I think uh, a standard dose of melatonin and zinc are appropriate and will be just fine for, for the average bear. Um, Lillian says she's low carb. Okay. No sun going to snow in Iowa. Oh, it's going to snow there. Oh, wow. Hello, Mandy Hale, who has beef. You know, Mandy, when you just jump on here and say beef, it's like my mouth begins to water. I begin to drool. So, uh, and then when Lillian says liver, um, oh, 
Yes. Zinc is found in beef and zinc is found in liver. Yes. I think that's what those are for. <laughs> you can get on and just say bacon too. And I smile and drool. So it's, yeah, it's great. Um, all right. It, it's been raining for a week in San Diego. Very little sun. I'm sorry. That's why I don't live in San Diego. Uh, red meat. Yes. Red meat has zinc in it. Yes. You guys have been looking it up for me. Thank you. Can your melatonin mess with your circadian rhythm? If you take melatonin off, yeah, it can mess with your, your, it can mess with your circadian rhythm. Yes. So I recommend taking it at night because melatonin peaks at night and, and drops in the, during the daytime. Any words of wisdom on not being able to restart the weight loss of a ketogenic diet for the second time around after stopping? So Tina, yes. Um, if you restarted your ketogenic diet, the question is, are you, are you, are you doing it correctly? Are your carbs truly low enough? And are you taking in enough protein? Number one, number two, you're probably fat adapted and the way you lost weight before there may still be too much fat in your diet. And it's not that it's a caloric issue. It's that you are very efficient at absorbing fat and you never lose that capability in that six month window. And so you may need to be, you may need to stop drinking your fat or your calories and decrease that fat to protein ratio of in regards to one to one by grams um, or decrease the fat content to around 60, 50 to 60% of your calories instead of 70 to 80, if that makes sense. And now, if that's not working, then I would check your thyroid and I would check your other female hormones. That's, that's the direction I usually go. Do we need to supplement with copper? copper? Not usually, Tammy. Um, you don't usually use, use, you don't, you don't usually need to because copper is such a trace element that, that very, very small amounts, um, are adequate. Uh, and so there's usually not, unless you have a, a Wilson's disease, which is a, which is a problem with copper metabolism, then you don't necessarily need to add it. Um, I love melatonin with magnesium. Well, yeah, they, Sherry, they, they are effective in helping people sleep. I have a lot of people, the patients that do well with that. I have copper toxicity and take about 1500 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. Should I add zinc? Um, so Katrina, I don't know. Uh, do you, if, if you have a copper absorption problem or if you have a copper toxicity issue, that's something you need to address with the doctor because depending on the level of copper, uh, then, then there, magnesium or zinc may be two approaches in treatment, but, but without knowing your history, I can't, I can't comment on that issue because taking excess zinc and magnesium, although could displace copper, one of the questions is why do you have copper toxicity? Um, all right. And then kale has zinc. Yes, kale does have zinc. Thank you, Cinda. Kale, it's in the kale. Um, you know, it's always kale, isn't it? I, I actually, I like, I like, um, Kale is actually great, but uh, there's too many recipes with kale. Uh, all right, Cindy. I was going to, uh, there's a number of kale jokes that I'll pass on today. All right. Let me see. It, it's Cindy from Kansas City. Even with the good news about hy hydroxychloroquine, do you think that we will be wearing masks and gloves for a year? Cynthia, I don't know. Um, my my hope is that this will pass within the next month and that we'll be able to back off all of the masks um, in, in probably a month or so. But what we don't know is will this, similar to the flu, have a cyclical um, uh, reoccurrence? Uh, we don't know the answer to that yet. Um, I, I, am, I am excited by the fact that... Um, we've had dramatically less numbers of people with severity and illness than we anticipated would there would be. So that my hope is that it will be much more like the influenza if it does happen. Uh, but for the next two to four weeks, because the numbers are still higher, I mean, we had 8,000 deaths in, in New York alone. So that's pretty significant, you know, in that, in that three or four week window, that's a pretty significant issue. Um, so and, and I think is it 170,000 cases in New York we, they, they're, that are we're there right now. So it, it has some, it's, it's pretty significant. Um, but, but will we be wearing masks indefinitely for a year? I don't think so. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> let's see rain here. So, Oh, so much rain, vitamin D3 helpful. Uh, even if it's raining and it's cloudy, when you're outside, you're still going to get, um, conversion of your vitamin D. Now, D3 and D2 are precursor molecules to what the body does with sunlight uh, to use vitamin D. So vitamin D3 is helpful. And I find that if people are doing low-fat diets, 
they're going to be deficient in um, D3 as well. So doing a, a ketogenic diet helps bring the, D, the D levels right back up. No Bill Gates vaccines for me. You know, Bill Gates can go do whatever he wants to do. I'm not worried about Bill Gates at this point in time. Um, let's see. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, I do not get any vaccine. Oh, okay. We're back to the vaccines. Let's see. Should magnesium and zinc be taken separately? I would, yes. I don't. I, I would take magnesium in the evening. And well, they're both they're both minerals. They're both metals, so they can be taken together. But I would take them separate. They're not fat soluble. Usually, we have you take minerals separate from your meal and your fat soluble items with your meal. Um, the only magnesium I can tolerate is magnesium glycinate. I uh, can't take much of it without diarrhea. Un unfortunately, most uh, magnesium causes diarrhea unless it's the magnesium glycinate form. Can't, I can't get back. We are in lockdown. Oh, in, from in regards in lockdown, they're in. Uh, you said in um, Taiwan, I, I, I forget. Let's see, hello Peggy. After 24 hour fast, is it normal to have loose bowels? It actually can be Dennis, yeah. Uh, your, body's not used to, your, your body's not used to not having food in it. And so if you've been using water and salt, you may have a little bit of looser bowels when you first eat your first meal. So some people talk about eating a small meal and not giving yourself a lot of food because it can stimulate some looser bowels uh, in some people. So be, that's yes, that's not uncommon. Is there a maximum magnesium? Is there a max for magnesium? Um, Sue, the max is when you can't get off the toilet. That's what the max is. Um, I would start with 250 milligrams and work your way up if you need it. Uh, some people find that uh, that can be notably um, bowel loosening for some people, although some people may need that. All right, 10 milligrams of melatonin. That's the maximal dose, Teresa. Yes, that I would take. That's what I take currently. Joined a little late. How much zinc per day? No more than 50 milligrams. I usually tell people 10 to 30 milligrams uh, per day. Hello, Marilyn in, in Toronto. Can you share how being in ketosis positively affects the immune system's ability to fight pathogens? So two things, yes. So number one, in, so because you, you're in a ketogenic state, your insulin level is low. Insulin turns on what's called the NLRP3 inflammasome. That's the, the, pre, that's, that's the primary hormone that drives inflammation. That turns on in the fat cells, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1, interleukin 6, and a whole slew of other cascades of inflammatory hormones that turn down the ability of the immune system to function efficiently. When you've lowered insulin, you're actually lowering those hormones as well. And the ketone itself actually stimulates um, improved immune response uh, and some of the uh, the, T, the killer killer T cells and some of the other C, uh, C, uh, I think they're called CD cells that affect um, immune response. So the presence of the ketone enhances those and stimulates what's called apoptosis. So your body's regenerating and uh, and rebuilding much faster, which is also a part of the of the in, immune response. Uh, I hope that made sense. Uh, that was the answer to Stacy's question. There, I have heard and read some on L-carnosine, your thoughts. Bob, I like L-carnosine. It works nicely in, in cellular regeneration. Um, it also helps. Uh, L-carnosine is present in the, um, let's see, the, in, 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 the liver actually stimulates the production of L-carnosine and helps with main, maintenance of testosterone and maintenance of your male hormones. So, um, I don't mind supplementing it a little bit. Uh, I think it's appropriate, uh, but it actually it's actually enhanced with a ketogenic diet all by itself. A lot of people push it really heavily with low-fat diets because they can't make enough of it, um, and, they, and they actually see a drop in their testosterone with low-fat diets. Uh, hello, from book, hello, Belinda, how are you? Yes, there's zinc and beef. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. But it's, but it's, it's probably the, the fasting. <laughs> and... And I ate a nice piece of prime rib, and now my brain's kind of going, oh, I feel really good. It's really nice. Um, the, my parasympathetic nervous system kicked in, uh, which is the, uh, the after dinner, I would like to take a nap now, uh, nervous system. Is 20 milligrams of melatonin too much? Yes, Mirinda, it is. I think it is. Uh, unless you're, you're using it to treat insomnia, I would not, go, I would not use that much. Uh, and then if it's not, and then if you're taking 20 milligrams of melatonin and you're not, and your insomnia is not improving, it's too much. Thoughts on quercetin for COVID uh, prevention? I have heard people talk. Now, when you say quercetin, um, are you talking about you're not talking about quinine, or you're talking about actual quercetin? 
I, I don't really benefit taking it. I have not seen any data on it that makes me think you need to supplement it or it's going to be helpful. I know I've seen some people talking about it, but I, I don't know where the, what, what, where the data is that makes them think that that's going to be helpful. What's the story with quinine? Okay. Um, the quinine story is this. Quinine has been used for malaria. Um, quinine has to be taken three times a day. It's usually taken in combination with other anti anti antibiotics to enhance the abilities to, of the body to heal from malaria. Now, the problem with quinine is quinine actually can have some pretty significant um, nervous effects, and it can have some pretty significant effects on um, uh, the uh, body's the, what, what, the the immune cells, specifically the neutrophils, and um, it can lead to uh, no, what, what's called uh, it's particular bleeding. Is the there's, a, there's some really huge there's like three or four different disease processes that are related to uh, platelet suppression, uh, neutrophil suppression, and uh, petechial bleeding across the, the body and the lower legs, uh, something called ITP and TTP. Um, it's, the thrombocytes are damaged by it because it can be toxic. Uh, what we, they found is that even small doses of quinine um, can induce this problem, which can be permanent. And so the, the FDA, after seeing this happen fairly significantly with patients, took it off the market, except for specific treatment of um, malaria, certain resistant forms of malaria. Now, there is still a small amount of quinine in tonic water, but even then there are patients that have these side effects with a single dose of tonic water that can occur. And tonic water is loaded with both sugar and high fructose corn syrup. So you're taking a sugary drink and adding quinine to it. And then you're telling people drink more of it because it's going to prevent your COVID-19 or your coronavirus. The problem is that there's a significant percentage of patients that have significant and potentially permanent side effects from the quinine itself. Uh, and there's no data to show that quinine treats the uh, viral infection. Uh, hydroxychloroquine is effective because of one of the one of the mechanisms it uses and chloroquine is effective in one of the mechanisms it uses but both have some potential side effects but there's no data that says quinine is effective quinine although it's an anti-malarial similarly it, there's no data that says it works similarly and the risk the risk of quinine is even greater than that of chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine so i would not i don't recommend it um, I don't think it's a wise thing to do. And so recommending using larger amounts of tonic water because you're going to get more quinine is, is inappropriate. Um, and in my perspective, dangerous in many cases. So you're, so, so people are talking about using mega doses of, of zinc, large amounts of quinine and, um, or, or trying to get more quinine through tonic water, which is now raising the sugar content. And if you are insulin resistant, now you've kicked yourself into, um, uh, uh, you kick yourself out of a ketogenic state. You've raised your blood sugar. You're enhancing the metabolic syndrome problems, which then puts you at risk. And it's kind of a a, 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 a bad spiral. That's a, that's kind of a long winded answer. <clears throat> All right, but I've but I talked about that in another video. It was cold in um, Kentucky today. Got out and sat in the sun. Oh, good for you! Fantastic. How much is enough protein? That depends, Sherry, on. Uh, your height and physical body composition. And I have a whole uh, article in, uh, in my book and I have a whole t uh, a number of topics about the use of protein on my blog. So go to my blog and type in protein at docmuscles.com and you can see that there. Thank you, Tina. You're very kind. A lot of time you speak of, a lot of time you speak of a particular food raises insulin. Have you tested your insulin level after eating specific foods? Yes, I have. And since we are all different, how can we see, as laymen know if something we consume causes? So we, we can we can do it in an indirect way, Nita. Um, so you can check your blood sugar. Uh, when your blood sugar goes up, your body produces insulin to follow. And as insulin rises, your ketone levels drop. So if you're checking blood sugar and ketones regularly, as the blood sugar rises, ketones will fall. Now, your blood sugar may not rise, but if ketones fall, that means there was an insulin spike without raising blood sugar. Um, and depending on how insulin resistant you are, if we monitor ketones, we can actually determine 
uh, in an indirect way how what that insulin level may or may not be. Now we're extrapolating and, and assuming that that's the case. Um, there, there, and so there's a couple of indexes that can be used where you're looking at your, your, your ketone level and your glucose level. And depending on what those levels are, you can extrapolate what your insulin may be. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the Keto Mojo does that. It gives you an index for that. I don't use the index much. I just happen to know that if your blood sugars are up over 110, you're, you're probably you're, you're producing enough insulin that it's not going to let you get into ketosis. And it's, it's, being, it's getting your ketone levels above 0.5. If the if your ketone levels are above 0.5 naturally, um, then we know that your insulin is low enough that you're not producing inflammation and and uh, you're, you're not having the, the problems that higher insulin levels will be. Does that make sense? Uh, wrote a whole if you have if you don't if you want to know more about it, wrote a whole book on it on how how that works and what and what happens there. That's the keto cure. All right, <clears throat> will, me will melatonin mess with trazodone? Uh, it should not, Sherry. Uh, my body doesn't process copper. It's running amok. How do you know that, Katrina? Um, I, I, a lot of people say my body doesn't process copper, but is that you, did your doctor find a copper deficiency? Um, Dr. Nelly said five to 10 milligrams. Oh, she's answering. Uh, D3 and K2, okay to take. It depends on what you're taking them for, uh, Peggy. I, I recommend D3. I don't necessarily recommend K2 uh, because you don't necessarily have to have it. Um, although a lot of people want to, you don't want you to buy it with your D3 because it pays for their yacht or their boat. Um, all right, let's see. Hello, Carrie. If you're eating eggs and egg yolk, you're getting all the K2 you need. Uh, been making myself go outside in the morning, sit in the sun. Good for you. That's awesome. Does melatonin shut off insulin production in pancreas? As far as I know, Eric, it does not. I have not seen any data to show that. Um, if there's a study that you're aware of, let me know, but I have not seen that ha to happen. Um, and the recommendation for using melatonin is uh, unrelated to that of, of insulin. Let's see, fat soluble vitamins with food and minerals between. Yep, that's very good. All right, my dad is 87, wife's 86, near you for the winter. I told him to stay there, <laughs> okay? Let's see, did the 24 hour, did, did the fast, have a headache, have a headache all day, not enough salt probably, Linda, drink plenty of water and salt, um, or you're withdrawing from caffeine. Uh, that's also another reason you, you had caffeine and you, you didn't have any today and it gave you the headache. Um, is melatonin safe with CKD? It is, it is Carla. Are you still not drinking diet soda? Uh, Katrina, I went back to drinking diet Dr. pepper because, um, of the long work hours I had, it was, I was using it as a caffeine delivery system. Your reactions make me laugh. <laughs> my reactions do. That's funny. All right, where can I find my vitamins? You can find my vitamins online at ketoliving.com, K-E-T-O-L-I-V-I-N-G.com. Does zinc help hair loss? It does, uh, to some degree. Uh, it doesn't always fix it because there are about four or five things that can cause hair loss. Zinc is one of them. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us and help us. You're very welcome, Ruth. Uh, that's very kind of you. I received your thyroid protocol via email. Oh, good, you got it. Would that protocol change if I'm eating organs nearly every day? No, it wouldn't change. It's still the same. Um, what is your take on allulose? I don't use it. It raises my insulin. Now, it's, it was they claim that it wasn't supposed to, but it does to mine, and it doesn't make me feel good, so I don't like it. Now, you might try it. Check your ketones, see what happens, but uh, that, that I, I, don't, I don't care much for it. We have sold our house, bought a house right at the beginning of this craziness. What a ride. Oh, I bet, Debbie. I found myself making carbage choices during this move, uh, having more joint pain and depression. The carbage will do that to you. Told my husband I'm back on keto close, uh, and choosing not to fall off the wagon again. Good for you, Debbie. So journal what you experienced. Write it down. Um, and that way your brain remembers it easier and it's, it's you've documented it and you can go back and look at it later and remind yourself about it. Have feet swelling. Haven't changed the diet. It could be because you're sitting more. That's a possibility. Um, if you're more sedentary and you're not as physically active, that can cause you, to, uh, that physical activity often causes your, you to burn through uh, your, if you are insulin resistant, it actually lowers the insulin. Now, if you're more sedentary, your insulin level can creep up a little bit and can cause the legs to swell a bit. That's, that is a possibility. Uh, hello, Kimberly, you're not late. You're never late. Uh, but you should always go back and watch the replay. 
let's see. Yes, the doctor found the issue. I'm working close. Oh, this is where you're getting the copper. Good. Okay, work work closer with your doctor, doctor, because that's if you have a copper uh, absorption, a copper uh, metabolism problem, that's a whole different ball ball of wax. Um, research shows that quercetin and ECG are ionophores for zinc. Thus, they get zinc into the cell where it disrupts the viral replication. There, I realize that there's there's been some anecdotal evidence about quercetin that in that regard, uh, the ECG, the E, the ECGCG, I've also heard anecdotally does that. I have not seen the science that that proves it. They just talk about the absorption is effect, effective with that, as far as I understand it. But I have not read, read a lot about the quercetin component, Eric. So that's one area that I probably need to look at a little closer. I just have not. Um, hello, Scott. How are you? He's back. There he is. That is Scott Reynolds. If you've not seen Scott, that is Scott. Um, I guess th that is Scott right there. That's Scott Reynolds. Scott Reynolds is um, one of the uh, uh, chat bar kings on my my uh, on my uh, lives here. Eating keto since June, uh, having arthritis pain, and occasionally my wrists and is there some occasionally. My wrist. Is there something else we can, should check out? You see me. Well, Shelly, when we check it out, we're going to look at your diet closely. Uh, it, 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 hopefully, you're truly doing keto correctly. Could be a medicine. Could be a supplement. Um, could be your hormones. There's a number of things that it could be. So we we'll look forward to seeing you. Rosemary acid. Having a hard time finding it. Um, it, it, well, rosemary, the actual herb rosemary, it turns into rosemary acid in the body. So if you're using rosemary and you're cooking, that's one way to get it. Um, rosemary extract is not the same thing. No. Uh, and I realize that it's hard to find. Yes. It, 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 that is one of them that's uh, difficult to find, but it is out there. Uh, doctor from MedCram recommends it. I don't know who, I don't know. I don't know Med. I don't know who recommend MedCram is there. Tammy, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, let's see. Orthopedic says knee replacement is the next step. If you want to get this with, oh, so it, Shelly says that it's uh, her pain and inflammation is because of the arthritis. Um, all right, planned, have a planned deviation for my brother's birthday tomorrow. How fast after a blood sugar spike does the immune system deplete recover? That really depends on your body type and how insulin resistant you are, Kayla. So I, I can't really, for some of us it's 24 hours, some of us it's seven days. Uh, it really depends. Can I take hydrochlorothiazide and D3 K2 without hurting my kidneys. So I guess, Jim, why would you want to take it? Um, I, I guess my, my question is, if unless you absolutely need the hydrochlorothiazide, why would you want to take it? Um, the only reason I would, you would be taking it is either for blood pressure or for a, an issue with vertigo. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I, I can't answer that question without knowing your, your history. All right, guys, uh, this was going to be a short live announcement. We're at 42 minutes, so good questions. If there's any other questions, I will try to answer them. If not, I'm going to go and put my feet up. Thanks for the information on indirectly measuring insulin. Oh, you're welcome. The Quercetin recommendation came from Dr. Berkowitz uh, during a podcast with Jimmy Moore. The doc said recommendation came from cases out of Shanghai. Um, I, I have not read those uh, cases. Um, Oh, okay. And I know Dr. Berkowitz was, was doing some, he was using quercetin anecdotally because of some information that he had heard about it. Again, he's treating the most severe of the severe. Uh, and so the, the actual data behind that, I'd have to look, at, look into. And he, if I understand correctly, I think he's an internist that, that's actually working in the intensive care unit, but, but I may be wrong there. You are very welcome to the journal. Yes. Awesome. All right. Renal artery stenosis. Oh, you're taking your hydrochlorothiazide for renal artery stenosis. Okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, you are very welcome, Jojo. Happy Easter to you guys. Eating keto two years, lost the first year, stayed. I'm not quite sure what that means. Stayed M since. Um, haven't changed food. Taking doTERRA supplements, can they be causing stalls? Yes, doTERRA could do it. Um, yes, I am not a fan of. Okay, you're not going to like me, Michelle. Um, the only essential oil that I find is essential is bacon grease. There's no other essential oil. Coconut oil falls in there too, but, uh, um, and I have a lot of patients using doTERRA supplements that the, the, the supplements stimulate an insulin response and cause them to stall. So you need to look closely at why you're using a supplement and what it's doing to your ketones and your insulin. You are very welcome, Crystal. 
Uh, you're very welcome, Kayla. Have a good evening, Peggy. Thank you. Um, Kat, you as well. And I think I almost got every one of you. Do I need exogenous ketones when I exercise? Well, you don't need them, no, but 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 they have some benefit depending on what your goals are. Um, I use them for increased endurance. And I use them for increased um, uh, lifting capacity or power. I find that it helps my my lifting. You guys have a great evening. Uh, keep up all the good work. Carrie said she had a hysterectomy 15 years ago and now having a hard time losing weight. Uh, it, it could be one of either or both, Carrie. So you need to have those checked. Uh, all right. I don't like water. What should I drink? Oh, hold on. Let's see. Where did it go? Um, I lost. Oh, here. Okay. Dave said, I don't like water. What should I drink? Dave, you should drink water. Um, let's see. You guys are welcome. All right. I am going to beetroot raises my blood sugar. Don't use beetroot. I do not recommend beetroot. Beetroot is, remember, we used beets to make sugar when we didn't have sugar cane. Don't use beetroot. It will raise your insulin every single time. And I don't care who says, oh, it's good for you. It's not good for you on a ketogenic diet. Do not use beetroot. Give it to the neighbor you don't like or give it to the person who says it's good for them and have them use it. All right. I am going to... Do I agree with Jimmy Moore's opinion on cholesterol statins? I don't know what his recent opinion is, but I have written a plethora of articles on cholesterol and statins. And so go check out my blog. Um, I've done multiple videos at you, on YouTube forward slash DR Nally on cholesterol and statins. Um, in fact, I've given lectures on why um, cholesterol and statins are not essential if you're using a ketogenic lifestyle. So go check those out. I'm assuming that they're the same. I haven't seen if you've said something new recently, but yes, our opinions have been the same for a long time. Um, okay. Drink water is always the right answer. Hey, Sean. Hey, if you're up in Utah, go see Sean. Sean Curzon, this guy right here, is was in my medical school class. Sean, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, send people your way. If you're up in Utah, go see Sean. One of the smartest guys I know. Very good guy. You got to go see Sean. He's a good guy, um, and he's he's a pretty handsome dude too. I'm more handsome than he is, but I think his wife likes him. So go check out Sean if you're up in the Utah area. He does a. I keep pointing the wrong way. Go check out Sean. Um, and he'll have you drink water too. But Sean, Sean is a good guy. So uh, you got to check out Sean's, Sean Curves on, Sean, unless your practice is closed, Sean. Uh, but I'll have people come check you out if you're up in the Utah area. Let's see. Dog Muscles has some on his website. Yes, I do. Uh, all right. I will look at your cholesterol posts. Yes, please do. Katrina, look at them. Uh, I look forward to your live videos. I always learn something. I always learn something too, Jennifer. It's, um, amazingly, I actually do. All right, you guys. I'm going to go put my feet up and probably watch Lord of the Rings with my daughter uh, and enjoy the uh, the last part of Good Friday. Lord of the Rings and Good Friday, that goes, that goes well together, right? It should. All right. I will check in with you guys later. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy Easter. And I hope you enjoyed your fast. And um, remember, keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, pass the bacon, and wear your mask. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.